Hi, this is uh, Koiru, and this time I have a video that of special interest for the Norwegian viewers. The Commodore Amiga N64 users uh, back in the 80s and early 90s can in many cases be considered a cult. And as every cult, they have their religious scripture, and this is as close as it gets when it comes to what we can call uh, the scripture of the Commodore people back in Norway. You have to remember this was before the internet, this was before any kind of online ordering. And every country had their own preferred source of this type of equipment. But in the late 80s in Norway, it was this company, the Datatronic, that was considered the number one source. Datatronic was both the importer and seller of much of this equipment, and for your viewers that's not situated in Norway and don't know much about the uh, Amiga and, and Commodore 64 scene in Norway, you will find that you have seen everything in this catalog before but in another format. Yes, and you can see on the front page they have actually made an index to make things easier for the Vivid fans uh, back then. And I don't think there is any harm in displaying this address because this company is long since gone. They start by listing diskettes, a popular item back in the day. Disc box, the disc notcher, disc boxes, cleaning tools. And this is a rather interesting case, so to speak. The 8-bit guy featured a video recently where he put his clone pet in a um, C64 case, and this is the cases that's actually molded in the same molds as the original Slimline Commodore 64 was. But this was an option that was available uh, back in the day, and this is something that's made by another company, and this was made to fit uh, the internals of your bread bin into a new case. And you can read from their uh, description here. Slimline 64, new look, put your old bread bin C64 in a new box and make it a new Slimline appearance. Dust covers, Swilton table bases, old fashioned printer paper, you have the um, labels, both for, this was actually for the 5 and a quarter inch floppy as they was 102 by 36. You have ink cartridges, different uh, cables, you have a copy cassette deck, and this was not the original uh, C2N, this is uh, a copy that looks almost the same, I actually have at least one of those. The Amiga 500 in different packages, uh, they was bundled with software and other uh, equipment much in the same manner as they was uh, in UK back in the day. Listings of Amiga software, other peripherals like the A2084 monitor, disk drives, monochrome monitors, uh, extra floppy drives, and here it's actually listed the 1581 floppy drive for 2,890 krona, and it was quite expensive back in the day. I remember I actually bought two of those for from this company and that was when they sold out the rest stock and I think I only paid about 
1400 krona for each of them. Memory expansion, a 20 megabyte hard drive, 7950 krona, that's actually 3000 krona more than the base unit. And that was the price for a drive back in the day, and also the controller was really expensive. Commodore 64, and in 1988, then in Norway, you get the base unit, you get a joystick, and you get a cassette player, and also a tape with 75 games uh, on a cassette. I know this looks a bit suspicious, but I don't think it was pirated software that was offered uh, back in the day. And this technical data for the C64 should be known to everyone. Games for the Commodore 64. And now we come to the more interesting stuff. The Final Cartridge 3 was launched back in this time. I myself never owned the Final Cartridge 3 back in the day. I only had the version 2, but I kind of liked that. And it was also considerably more stable than the Final Cartridge 3 with all its menu drive and options. And the price for this 495 was actually pretty cheap. I remember Parallel importing mine from England, I think. And I remember that I paid about 700 Norwegian Krona for my Final Cartridge 2 back in the day. This is the Action Replay Amco 4. And this is mainly advertised as a backup cartridge. And we all know what backup meant back in the old C64 days. This is equipment that they imported from Evis and Micros and from the other manufacturers around Europe and sold and, and imported to Norway. And you have a light pen. You have paddles, you had a MIDI interface, and this was something I actually had back in the day. You could switch between cartridges with this expansion and motherboard. And I had different kinds of this. This exact version uh, was the one I, I stuck with. It had this good slide switch where you choose which cartridge you should, and it had this reset switch. This is how you're going to put your own EEPROM into a cartridge. And they had this 16K EEPROM board of another kind, where you had two 8K EEPROMs. They sold the Turbo Room, uh, that was a fast drive. The copy interface for the uh, C2N cassette deck. And some software tools. And Discmate was another fast load cartridge with also a lot of other extras as machine language monitor and so on. The joypad, sound sampler, drum kit, Eprimer 64, and this one I actually got and I still have it. It's the Dotel version of an Eprimer for the C64, and I actually use this a lot. Yes, more uh, cartridges. Super Room Expander. Here you could actually put in cartridge rooms and have your Commodore 64 not see everything at once, but you could switch between them. I never actually heard of anyone who got this to work uh, properly. Various joysticks. Me, myself, I preferred the Competition Pro variation, even though I was not much of a gamer anyway. And you have some programmer's reference manuals. And this was some more useful stuff. And this was the kind of stuff that I at least dreamt of, of owning uh, back in the day. Uh, IC tester for all the 74 uh, variations of logic. Uh, they also have this bigger EEPROM burner from, from Merlin that actually could write to bigger EEPROMs and also handled a lot of the EEPROM variations. And here was this adapter where you could put an ordinary 8-key EEPROM into your 
C64 and experimental board for putting into your user port uh, with the final connection and also some uh, breadboard that you can do experiments on oscilloscope for your C64 this was not the most useful of things and I've actually seen this in function and it's slow it has a low frequency range and the storage on the C64 was really not up to the task but it actually was working on low frequency waveforms and you can also buy this this was a Centronic interface the UV EEPROM eraser I didn't have this one but I had uh, two other kinds and this here they go on to on almost the last page they come to useful things for your Commodore 64 where they have this educational uh, software and on the final page you can also see that they sold IBM compatible computers and they was a dealer for the Victor brand of computers and Victor was actually quite big uh, in Norway back in the day and I remember when I was uh, went to the engineering school in, in Narvik they actually had lots and lots of Victor computers and me myself I've only managed to keep one Victor computer and that is a, a legible 286 computer with a, a plasma screen it's not in mint condition but I actually used it a lot uh, back in the day yes and here you could mail order your stuff you can just write it here and you can put this in mail and when you ordered like this you paid for the package when you was collecting it from the post office and it was actually a quite useful and common way of ordering stuff uh, back in the day so that's about rounds is up for the datatronic catalog of 1988 low price uh, computer equipment for the whole of norway and they actually gave them gave themselves this award for being number one on low price and quality not low quality but low price and high quality so thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this trip into memory lane and i will come back to you with more videos soon <laughs>